Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, how beautiful and appropriate to sing holy, holy, holy as we gather at the altar to praise our God, Father, Son, and Spirit, to worship him through his Son, the sacrifice of love that we will celebrate at this altar, inspired by once again by the word of God proclaimed. It is a joy to be here, rejoicing on this 22nd Sunday of ordinary time, that the Lord is with us, that our faith is strong, that the bride of Christ reigns. We've been reminded of the reality of sin, confusion, and darkness. But what we celebrate at this altar is that all of that has been overcome by grace, by love and mercy. So let us individually and personally turn to the Lord with contrite hearts, acknowledging that we come as sinners, pleading for and receiving his mercy that we might be better prepared to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie
Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. You took me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You are too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter, everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all day long. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The man who does justice shall live in the presence of the Lord. The man who does justice shall live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, Money hurts usually, and it's 
Christus nor bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. The man who does justice shall be A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourself to this age, but transform by the renewal of your mind you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. we may know what is the hope that belongs to our call. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. <clears throat> Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
You may be seated. As Deacon Keith Fournier said when we began last evening, it is good for us to be here, especially in this beautiful new facility here in the city of Tyler. I didn't check with the Chamber of Commerce, but I'll let them know they are blessed that we have celebrated the Eucharistic liturgy of Jesus Christ, celebrated him at this altar, this for the second time, thanks to Father Hoare who celebrated us this morning. Many of our brothers and sisters, many who are part of us, in baptism, part of the church, would have no idea of the importance of what we've done here in these two days. As Father Paul mentioned, that first Mass celebrated by the priest with Cortez and his men there in Mexico atop an Aztec pyramid. Not quite as dramatic here, but always with the Mass just as important, just as significant. We are here, word and sacrament, celebrating Jesus Christ. It is good for us to be here. And I turn to the second reading, Paul to the Romans, which I believe captures important words for all of us to ponder as we go forward, living, and at times defending the truth that Christ has built. Paul says to the Romans, do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Brothers and sisters, I that believe that is our charge. We are told over and over again by so many, from so many different corners, to conform ourselves to this age, to adapt, update, renew. But these words, these ancient words from Paul to the Romans, and think about who he's speaking to. The Romans, who for long thought that they dominated the world, that their empire would last forever. And Paul is speaking to them as things begin to crumble. But we need to hear the words as well because we find ourselves in a time where we are told vehemently at times, conform yourselves. But all of us baptized and probably the vast majority confirmed in our Catholic faith, we are conformed to Christ. He is our model, he is our life. And these two days, I've been reminded, and hopefully all of us have been reminded, to resist 
as St. Paul says, conforming ourselves to this age because we follow Christ. In order to strengthen that following, we are to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. In the truth incarnate that is Jesus Christ. I turn also to the gospel according to Matthew. This familiar scene where Jesus, as he often does in the gospel, forewarns the disciples that he will suffer greatly and be killed, but on the third day be raised. I think we can tell from St. Peter's response, much like ours would likely have been, God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. I can imagine in part of Jesus' response, him thinking, Peter, did you really hear me? Peter seems to have heard. He will suffer greatly and be killed. But he seems not to have heard. And on the third day be raised. And so Jesus goes on to say, you are not thinking as God does, but as human beings do. Of course, Peter could retort, well, Lord, that's all I am, a human being. That's all any of us are. But that renewal of our minds that St. Paul calls us to helps us to begin to move toward at least thinking as God does. And in God's thinking, His Son has shown us that suffering death on a cross can bring redemption. When that offering is given by the Son of God. The renewal of our minds, thinking like God, is to accept that truth for ourselves. Redemptive suffering, the crucifix shows us its power. We make the sign of the cross, and yet, we easily, like St. Peter, shy away. Let us be reminded and listen to all that Jesus says. He will suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. That truth is the renewal of our minds in Jesus Christ. Seeing this whole journey, the very meaning of our lives through the lens of his precious blood shed for us all. Finally, I look to the words from the prophet Jeremiah. How many times have we read them or heard them proclaimed and related to the prophet? You duped me, Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter, everyone 
mocks me. We probably all felt some element of that. If we have lived our faith, stood our ground, and not conformed ourselves to this age, likely we can relate to the words of Jeremiah. But returning to Christ and his words, to St. Peter, in many ways what our journey is, is to seek more and more completely, to think as God does, And God's thought is a wondrous, creative expression of all that is good, all that is true, all that is beautiful. To think as God does, does not ignore the brokenness of this world. But it calls us beyond the broken to be renewed, to be strengthened, to be transformed. That is the renewal of our minds that we are called to. And that renewal, I believe, is the greatest defense and guarding of our faith that each of us may know Jesus Christ more deeply word and sacrament knowing his sacred heart let us continue from these days of blessing together of being inspired and challenged to know the treasure of our Catholic faith and to allow nothing to put it asunder. Let us be renewed in the grace and life that flows from this altar that is Christ himself. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Almighty God, we come before you with the great blessings of an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe, a blessing brought from that original image that has been there in Mexico for almost 500 years. And also, Lord, we are blessed with a relic of Pope St. Pius X on this altar, a pope who taught and fought against the modernism that continues to threaten us. As we offer our prayers of petition, may we be inspired by these images and relics that remind us of the truth of your love. And so we offer our prayers of petition. That the bishops of the Catholic Church spread throughout the whole world would continue to guard the deposit of faith without compromise. They would speak the truth they would lead the faithful closer and closer to Jesus. They would be given the grace of their office to stand firm in the faith. Let's pray in a special way for the Bishop of Rome, the successor of St. Peter, Pope Francis, for our Bishop, Joseph Strickland, and let us pray for all of the bishops inspired by bishops in the past they would return to their foundations and stay faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the priests of the Catholic Church, that they would be given the grace they need to stay faithful to the sacramental ministry to which they were ordained that they would preach and teach the fullness of truth and lead the flock entrusted to them closer to Jesus Christ. And let us pray for an increase in vocations to the holy priesthood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our let us pray for the deacons of the church ordained not to the priesthood, but to the ministry that these men inspired by Stephen and Philip, by Ephraim and Lawrence, and so many deacons of the early church would rise in this urgent hour to defend the faith without compromise and to teach and to preach and to serve and reveal the servanthood of Jesus Christ to a church that so desperately needs that witness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for the religious, those consecrated to live the life of heaven in a prophetic way. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the religious life and the consecrated life. Let us ask the Lord to bless the sisters here in the Diocese of Tyler and that there would be a true renewal of religious vocations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Let us pray that the lay faithful called to evangelize, to witness to the truth, to defend the faith, to bring the gospel 
into the temporal order would do so with courage and heroic virtue. Let's ask the Lord to continue to give his grace to those who organized this conference and to raise up more and more faithful lay men and women to defend our Catholic faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our civil leaders that the Lord would give us truly just men and women in public office, that they would defend the fundamental right to life from conception to natural death, that they would defend and protect marriage and the family and social order founded upon it, that they would protect the rights of the church to preach and live the gospel and religious freedom, that they would show a true love of preference for the poor in all their manifestations. Let us ask the Lord to intervene in this nation and give us leaders who are truly just, who recognize him and who serve with true justice. For our civil leaders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Holy Spirit to be poured out afresh on the Catholic Church. And that we would see the healing of divisions with other Christians. And that the prayer of Jesus would be answered. Father, may they be one. And that the church would rise up in this urgent hour and help turn back the darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the young people, those who are flocking once again to the traditional Latin Mass and who hunger for transcendence in all of the churches, that the Lord would raise up in their midst the new saints and missionaries and indeed even martyrs that the church desperately needs. For all of the young, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for holy families, for consecrated Christian marriages, for the witness of the domestic church to rise up in an hour that has forgotten God and demonstrate his love for his church through the witness of their love for one another <clears throat> and for their children. For holy families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick in all their manifestations, body, soul, or spirit, that the Lord in his mercy would heal them and use us as his instruments to reach out to them. For the sick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. pray for the persecuted Christians around the world and thanksgiving for the heroes like Cardinal Zen and let us pray for the underground church in China and those who are suffering even to the point of shedding blood that once again we would see the blood of the martyrs become the seed of the church for the suffering church let us pray to the Lord Lord hear us with the souls in purgatory and for all who have died marked with the sign of living faith, members of our families, friends, clergy of the Diocese of Tyler, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And finally, that the Lord in his mercy would intervene in the upcoming synod and that the true deposit of faith would be guarded and protected, that all error would be exposed and banished, and that the Lord would give us holy shepherds to lead the church in the fullness of truth. For the upcoming synod, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, hearing the call of the renewal of our minds, 
a renewal that flows from you, wisdom herself, that you may guide us to be renewed in the body and blood of your Son and to truly live as his mystical body in the world. And we ask these prayers in your Son's name, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice to our enemies for the praise of the glorious name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer in us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Song. Song. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic 
and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. those whose memory that we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Gonsagans, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Our Father, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drank from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with this sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. To us also, your servants, who though we are sinners, hope in your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, 
through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another now a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him 
who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's been quite a couple of days, and I thank all who have participated and the great team that put this together. I think they've invented a new type of conference. It's called Instant. (laughs) (laughs) But they've done a marvelous job. And as we offer the final blessing, I offer it for all of the team here and so many others that have collaborated all of you who have traveled from far and near to be here to defend our faith, to rejoice in the treasure of great price that is life in Jesus Christ, in the church that he built, a church that will endure and does endure. More than endure, it flourishes right here. The blessing I will offer is offered for all those who helped make this happen. And for all of you as you travel home, that you may return home safely, 
full of memories and thoughts and joys and challenges of these couple of days. It occurs to me, it's Labor Day weekend, isn't it? (laughs) Many of you have labored, so get some rest. But let us rejoice to have the opportunity to labor in the vineyard of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.